morning, everybody. I'm very happy to show you today our tiny wire bonding 101. As an introduction, we do the wire bonding service uh, since 2010 in a strong cooperation with BNF Bonding. And our agenda for today is I want to show you what is a chip or bare die in comparison to an QFP. What type of wire bonding services are possible? We have gold and aluminum wire bonding. Um, how should the PCB design optimized to get the best results? And after wire bonding, how can you protect the dies and the wire bonds? Let's start with the chip and bare die. You can see in the upper picture a cross-section of the QFP. In this QFP, there is a very small silicon chip which is connected via wire bonding to the lead frame. The lead frame are the red lines and they are connected with the wire bonds with solder pads on the PCB substrate. In our example, the QFB or the size of the silicon in this QFB is usually five times smaller than the whole package. You can see now uh, the substrate and the bare die which is directly connected with the PCB substrate and you can see in comparison that here less space is needed. We have different types of or different possibilities for the die pickup. This one is directly from a wafer and you can see in our picture that there are dies which are inked. This means during the pickup it's much easier to avoid that you use non-working dies for smaller quantities or if the dies are selected, we can do the pickup directly from a vessel pack. The fixation of the die is done via vacuum. Um, we take care that the sensible surface area of the die is not damaged and that the, all functions of the, of the chips still work. Before we connect the die with a PCB or substrate, um, we use a glue and we can offer non-conductive glue and conductive glue like um, silver glues which um, are used for example for LED applications. After glue dispensing, the die is positioned and we have the possibility to do this very precise. This means we um, can position the die with plus minus 30 micrometers. After placing the die, the die bonding is finished and at a defined temperature and time we cure the glue, glue in an oven. Now I will talk about the two different types of wire bonding. In this picture you can see a gold wire bonding. Uh, on top of the chip there's the ball and on the bottom there is the wedge. Gold wire bonding is a thermosonic ball wedge bonding. This means you need temperature and ultrasonic power. Examples for applications are LED applications or sensoric applications. The next picture shows very nice how this could look. On the left one you see a view of a huge chip. I think it has 160 wire bonds and on the right side you see a chip which has around about 20 wire bonds. Um, on the following slides I will tell you something about the solder mask and the orientation of the landing pads on the PCB. The other technology, aluminum wire bonding, 
it's an ultrasonic wedge wedge bonding. You can see it here. So on the chip and on the PCB, um, the wedge is used to do the connection. For example, it's special sensoric applications or chip-to-chip -chip connection. We have such a special application. This is a water uh, quality sensor and you can see here that you have two rows of um, pads on the chip, which means the aluminum wire bonding is used to realize such solutions. On the right side you see a chip-to-chip -chip connection. This is done by aluminum wire bonding as well. And we use this, for example, for connecting two diodes together. A special application is realized with gold wire bonding. It's called stud bumps. You can see it on both pictures. This is done via gold wire bonding. This means only the ball is attached to the chip pad. This is used for applications like flip chip bonding. It's very important to choose the right surface. <clears throat> In our case for gold wire bonding we suggest to use ENIPIC. ENIPIC is for electroless nickel, electroless palladium, immersion gold the thickness of the different surfaces is 4 to 7 micrometer for nickel, 0.1 to 0.2 micrometer for palladium, and for gold it's 0.04 to 0.08. For aluminium wire bonding we use ENIC, this means electroless nickel, immersion gold. You can see nickel uh, is from the size or height the same compared to gold wire bonding and after you've chosen the right um, surface it's important that you optimize your PCB design and we can support you with this. This means it's very important that you choose which type of wire bonding you need. Um, one big question is is there are there SND parts on the PCB so you have to make sure that the position of the SND parts are correct and another important point is the solder mask area and all th three things are important for a correct PCB design for wire bonding as announced we will show you today our new design rules in this case it's aluminum wire bonding. I think it's very nice and very clear to see how you should modify your PCB design if you choose aluminum wire bonding. So if you see the chip, the chip head size should be 80 times 80 micrometer. The distance between chip and substrate pad should be 1.5 times of the chip thickness and another important point is you can see this in the small box on the right the chip pad to substrate pad orientation is parallel. In comparison the design rules for the gold wire bonding I think you will see it um, the mo main uh, difference is that the chip pad to substrate pad must be aligned in the same direction I have very nice sample pictures where you can see it in more detail on the next slides. Here you can see the orientation of the wire should be in the same orientation of the pad on the PCB. Here is a detailed picture and you can see in the right corner the orientation of the wire is in the same alignment in to the pad of the PCB. Top view, the same. You can see the pads are in the direction of the wire. And one 
or the another important point is that the solder mast is removed in one block. This makes sure that you get the best wire bonding results. As mentioned, the placement of the SMD parts are very important as well. So our suggestion is to place not the SMD parts on the back side of the chip. It's better to place it around the chip, for example. And another very good point is, or an information for you is, um, we can provide individual bond tool for fixation of the PCB. In this example, you can see with vacuum the chip is, or the PCB is uh, fixed um, by vacuum. And I have a very nice sample in the next slide where you can see the two drilled holes. Um, the PCB is placed over the two holes and <clears throat> you can see that then vacuum is applied and the PCB are fixed with a tool for the wire bonding. After the PCB design is optimized, it's very important that you add a globe top over the wires and over the chip. And we are very flexible with the usage of globe top. If you have an LED application, we can use crystal clear globe top or special LED globe tops. Even it's possible um, to cover not everything. For example, in the picture below, we use a lens holder for camera applications. Here are some samples, standard globe top on the top left and top bottom. The um, picture in the left corner, it's an RFID application. In the top right, it's a gas sensor where you can see um, the chip is not covered with globe top, but the parts around the um, chip. And a very nice example that even partial globe top is possible, so the black globe top around the chip and in the middle there is an optical area and this is covered with crystal clear globe top. Even bigger encapsulations are possible. So on the right side this was a uh, sensor and um, we had to protect all the parts below the globe top. And a final application example, this is a biochip. Uh, you can see the PCB in the right corner. You can see the active uh, um, bio parts in the right picture. This is a um, glass uh, chip. And uh, the important thing here was that the white plastic cover is connected to the PCB and the chip air-free. To summarize, I wanted to show you what is a chip bear die. It's an unpacked semiconductor where you can save space. The contact of the um, die is realized by non-conductive or, conduct or uh, conductive glue. The electrical connection is realized with wire bonding. We offer two wire bonding technologies, gold or aluminum wire bonding. It's important that you um, have a special PCB design and I want to remind you that we help you during your design stage. And after the wire bonding is finished, um, there are different possibilities uh, to protect the dies and the wires. One is globe top or mechanical components. In this picture you see the range of possibilities we can offer to you, which means we produce the PCB for you, we place um, the chips on the PCB, we cover with a globe top the chip area, and even a coil can be uh, um, 
welded or mounted um, with a PCB placed in a housing and this housing is covered with a special globe top glue. In comparison <coughs> to SMD soldering we can realize a high accuracy and placement of the chips and those high accuracy placements of the bare dies can be used for optoelectronics like camera applications, sensor technology or medical applications. We are very flexible in the design. As I told you, we can support you during your design process. If you have a miniaturization um, project, we uh, support you during your design process that you can use uh, the best space on your PCB. The a small selection of advantages of wire bonding. It's a miniaturization possible. It's a very good electrical connection and a good mechanical and thermal stability. That's for today. I thank you very much for your attention. I will give now uh, back the microphone to Dominic and I will check your questions and yeah, thank you for your attention. Philip, thank you very much for your presentation. So now before we start with the question and answer session, I want to point you towards our little survey. You will be forwarded automatically to it at the end of this webinar. Please take the time to give us feedback on the webinar so we can get better and improve our webinar program for you. In the survey you can also tell us your wishes about future topics. And as Philip Conrad said, um, you are welcome to download the latest design rules in our download area on our web page. You can find them right now. So let's move over to the question an answer session. I give the microphone back to Mr. Conrad now. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, well, let's um, pick some questions. I think one very good question is when uh, is the wire bonding done? Before or after SMD assembly? Uh, this is a very good question. From our experience, uh, we suggest that uh, the PCB production, after PCB production, the SMB assembly is done and then the wire bonding. This is uh, for very sensitive ASICs or chips, very important, um, for example, for the curing process. Um, the soldering process can damage the optical chip or even the membrane on the chip, so we suggest that uh, the wire bonding is at the end. Another question Dominic already answered, but too many people ask this. You can download the design rules on our web page. If you have further questions related to this, or maybe if you have uh, an idea for a project, please get in touch with us. We will support you from the beginning until the end. And another good question we can see here is it's possible to rework. This means um, during prototyping or if you just make a few prototype samples, um, we usually get a software to check is everything working. Um, and if you see that one wire is not really good connected, we can remove that wire and um, do the wire bonding process again. In comparison to SMD assembly, this wouldn't be possible. And for prototypes, it's um, possible as well. If we see that the chip is damaged or not working, we can replace the chip and use a new one. This means you don't uh, need to throw the not working parts away. We can rework it. The other questions are very detailed, so I suggest I get directly with you in contact. Um, again, thank you very much for your attention and interest. And now, Dominic, it's your turn. Thank you.